welcome to Godspeed Chapel Service at Darlington in 2008. And how, how, isn't it awesome we can worship the Lord under the wide open skies? I love it. I love it. Before we get started, <coughs> we're going to ask Miss Renee, if she will, to lead us in some songs. I know that we all know these. We're going to do the two songs on your sheet, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms and um, Victory in Jesus. If anybody wants to come up here and kind of start us off, I'm not going to sing with the frog in my throat, and I've got to go teach the kids too. I can either teach the kids or I can sing, and it won't be pretty singing. <laughs> off with leaning on Jesus. Well, don't you know we need to lean on Jesus every single day of our lives? That's what we're going to do. So just sing out. This is just congregational. Nobody's uh, paying any attention to what everybody else is saying. So just join in here and let's just praise the Lord this morning. And I'm so glad that Brenda and Steve had brought that to us and uh, different ones in the, the divisions. But uh, if you will turn over, how many of you would like to be able to be in the winner's circle today? Oh, I got one or two. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see what we can make do about that. But how many of you would like to win every day? Amen. And that is what victory in Jesus is all about. Thank the God for the blood of Jesus Christ who has given us the victory. And that we have a Savior who has overcome this world. So let's just lift our voices together. This is one in our church, everybody requests this one. If you have a song request, this is one that always comes up. So let's just praise the Lord this morning and give him all my love. For he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood.
God a great big shout of praise. Woo! Yes, Lord. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You guys did good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Renee didn't know this, but basically that's what my message is on this morning is really having real victory in Jesus. And I appreciate wow. that. That really worked out fine. God does that. He does it all the time, doesn't he? So I want you to know that my God is still in the healing business. He's still in the... When he worships the praise. He, he loves the praise that we give him. He inhabits the praise. It is what he, that just brings him into this place and into our hearts. So this morning I just had to share you that with you, that we can go and take these prayer concerns before God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning for the sunshine. We thank you for the ability to be here. Father, we praise you for shade. We thank you for this great country that we live in. And Holy Father, today we have come here at a drag strip in South Carolina, in the USA, to praise and worship our God and our Lord. We thank you for what you have done. And Father, we pray for this great country, that it was founded upon the principles of the Bible. It was founded upon the freedom of religion, and that each person should have the right to seek and find God. And, Lord, we pray for that continued. We pray for our leaders and our, our politicians, whether they are on a, a city or a, a state, a, a county, or a national level. Father, bring their hearts back to you. For your word tells us that if my people will call on my name and turn to me, I will heal, forgive their sins and heal their land. And, Lord, we need that. We need that in this upcoming election. Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer concerns. These names that we have lifted, Father, we thank you for what you are done. We pray your anointing upon Joe this morning and Lisa and myself as we teach, preach, and lead. And God, may everything be done to your glory in the precious, precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, ain't God good? I know that's not good. That's not, that's not good, um, what's it, um, language or whatever. That's, that's South Georgia stuff. They ain't God good. And I was talking to Mickey Reed this morning. He was sharing with me how he had just encouraged another brother in the Lord this morning at the truck stop. Am I okay up there? Everybody can hear me okay? <clears throat> I learned this morning you don't clear your throat in this thing. You got, but uh, anyhow, that's, uh, that's what we're supposed to do is encourage one another. And that's what I hope this morning's message is, is an encouragement. It's going to be more of a teaching, but y'all, there's some serious meat here that I've been studying over this message. I've been praying over it. Um, it's something the Lord has just put in my heart. You know, we all, we all face things. We all go through. Life isn't uh, a bowl of cherries. Life isn't a box of chocolates. There's, there's, there's things we go through. And, uh, but y'all, as Christians, we have those everlasting arms we can lean on. And we do have, we have practical, in the scripture, we have practical methods of living victorious. And our scripture reference this morning is, is from Romans. And I've got some some scriptures from Romans 7, verse 6. I mean, Romans 7, Romans 6, and Romans 12. And if you ever really want to just, if you, if you don't have a devotional at hand and you just want to start studying something that's really meat of, of, uh, of Christianity, pick up Romans. And I'll tell you what, you'll, you, you can spend months on that one book. But anyhow, we're going to start. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of Romans 7, 15 through 25. Starting with verse 15, it says, I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong, and my bad conscience shows that I agree that the law is good. But I can't help myself because it's sin inside me that makes me do these evil things. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what's good, but I cannot carry it out. Have you ever felt like Paul did when he penned these words? I'm sure that I'm not the only one that's felt that way. I'm sure basically anybody I talk to, when you start getting real with people and you realize, look at here, we're all on the same path. We're all on the same, in the same walk. But let me tell you something. If you have felt these feelings, it could have been as recently as this past week or yesterday, whatever it is, let me tell you you're not alone. And i also like to tell you that in the Scripture, we do have, and, and, and it's made clear to us that we have the authority and the power to overcome this in our lives. Um, we do have to grasp some basics. And one of the main things we've got to do, we've got to get one truth into our hearts, y'all. We got to come to the understanding that we are a child of God. Uh, 1 John says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. If you see yourself as a helpless victim of Satan, 
Okay, has anybody else ever done that? I'm just going to be straight. I've felt that, you know what I'm saying? Just, I'm just not strong enough, Lord. I don't know if you've ever felt that, but if you have, and if, you, if, if that's the, 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 the self-image you've got and you carry that with you, I'm just going to assure you right now, you're going to live the rest of your life as a victim in bondage to Satan. It's just going to happen. But on the other hand, if you see yourself as a dearly loved, a dearly loved child of God, you're going to have all, which, all, all that you need to take that first step to overcoming Satan's influence in your life. Oh, have you ever known of anybody, and it might even be you at this point in your life, but have you ever known of anybody that you would consider as a defeated Christian? They've been saved. They've, they've, they've walked with the Lord. They've accepted his grace and salvation, but they have never really made him the Lord of the, their life. They're heaven-bound. They know, they, they, they know that they're going to heaven, but you know what? Most of the time you'll find out they don't know who they are in Christ. Um, there is a cycle, and the cycle is, Someone, you'll, you'll commit a sin, you'll feel guilty for it, um, you'll repent, you'll turn around and do it again. It's like that dog chasing his tail, on and on and on. But here's some of the foundational building blocks to leading this productive Christian life. Number one, you're spiritually and therefore eternally alive. And I want to do a little teaching more than preaching on this right here. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, Yet inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. And y'all, as human beings, we're made up of basically two major parts. Our material self, our flesh, our, you know, our bones, our body, and our immaterial self. We refer to that as our outer man and our inner man. Um, because all human beings are created in, in, in the image of God, we've got the ability. All of us have the ability to feel, to think, and to make choices. And uh, as a human, we are physically alive when our body is in union with our soul and spirit. Is that, am I going too fast? Is that okay? That, everything's doing okay with that? Um, but as a Christian, as a Christian, y'all, our soul and our spirit is in union with God at the moment that we're saved. Um, now we don't just have the ability to think and to feel and to choose. Y'all, now we also have the ab ability to commune with our Heavenly Father. We can relate to God. We can actually... I've, I had a friend of mine that just explained something to me so awesome. This guy's my age, mid-50s. And he said, Joe, have you ever just crawled up in your daddy's lap? Well, I didn't on this earth. I mean, my dad was, uh, it's a long story, but anyhow, that wasn't that lovey, lovey thing back in them days. And, and uh, I said, what are you getting at? He said, man, he said, the sweetest part of my day is I just crawl up in my daddy's lap. Now, Roy is bigger than me, and I wasn't still getting what he was saying. He said, I got a big easy chair. And he said, the first thing I do, he said, I get up, and I said, I get my coffee take a few sips, and I just kind of curl up in that chair, and I say, Daddy, I'm in your lap. And he said he just, he just kind of rub, rub, runs his arms around himself, and I said, you know, that's a powerful way to look at how we are as being God's children. We can crawl up in his lap, and as he prays, that's his quiet time with God every morning. He's basically praying as if he's in the Father's lap. And then that, that, to me, that was just neat. It may not minister to anybody. That just that really ministered to me. When God created Adam, basically Adam was born with, he was born physically alive, and he was born spiritually alive. I don't know that I'm stepping too far off base by saying he was basically born saved. I mean, he, didn't, he knew no sin. But because of sin, and with that sin, he died spirit, his, a spiritual death. Every person that's the seed of Adam, every person that's born from Adam, comes in this world. We, we're born physically alive, but we're spiritually dead. At the moment we're born again, at that moment, our soul and our spirit is united with God. And once again, we become alive spiritually. And now, we're no longer in Adam. Now we're in Christ. And with Christ being eternal, guess what? That gives our soul and our spirit eternity. And, and I know these are some, some basic things we all know, but it's kind of building up to what I'm wanting to get to. Um, secondly, we're a new creation in Christ. Y'all, we've all got a past. Yours may not be as bad as mine. Mine may not be as bad as yours. we all got a past, and we all got a now, and we all got a future. And Ephesians 5.8 puts it so sweet to me. It says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. And uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, it says, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. In other words, we were in the flesh, we're now in Christ. We were a sinner, we are now a saint. With that what? With that eternal spirit. Uh, we were just, a, uh, we had a finite beginning, but y'all, we have an infinite end if we've accepted Christ. Oh. Uh, Something else I need to share, too. Just because we're a child of God doesn't mean we're sinless. But you know what it does mean? It really means that we don't have to sin. And uh, 
in 1 John, it says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. In other words, he's showing us that there is a way to walk that we don't have to sin. He said, But if someone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, and that's Jesus Christ. All right, now we're getting to the main two points I really like to share. Number one, you can be victorious over sin and spiritual death. And I want to establish something here. When we got saved, we were still in the same body, right? We still had all the original, the flesh is still present. We walked in with a whole lot of baggage, if you will. We walked in with a whole lot of habits. We were used to putting ourselves first, being number one. We still have them tendency. We walked in with a lot of sin. Uh, some of us came in with, with from drug addicted past, alcoholic past, perverted, whatever it is. But like I said, that was the past. Um, now that we're no longer in the flesh, we're now in Christ, we can choose a different path. We don't have to choose to walk. We can still choose to walk in sin. And a lot of times we'll mess up and do that, but we don't have to. Um, I want to share something else, too. In the Bible, if we see a promise in the Bible, um, what's the appropriate response? It's to claim that promise, right? If we see a, um, a commandment uh, in the Bible, the appropriate response there is to just obey it. And if we see a truth, and, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to pull out some of the truths. The, the only appropriate, appropriate response we have is to believe it. And I'm not going to go through all of Romans 6, verse 1 through 11, but I'm going to go through and I'm just going to hit a bunch of, of, of verbs in here. But let me start out the first couple of verses. It said, well, then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live it? Live in it. Have you forgotten that when we became Christians and were baptized to become one with Christ? We died with him, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. Notice, died and buried. Going through, it says, Christ was raised. Um, we have been united. In other words, everything, all these terms, all these verbs are past tense. It's things that have already been done. We've been, uh, Paul used the term baptized. It already been done, buried, crucified, died. Everything tells us what's already been done. All the only thing we can do is believe it. Go on back and, and, and pick up that scripture and read that and just know that, that he is speaking directly to us. Uh, so Christ has already died to sin. And if you're in Christ, if you've been born again, then you've already died to sin. Now, that, that's something we already know. We already know that. But isn't it good to be able to be reminded about it? Um, and Paul wrote in, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a holy, living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will accept. When you think of what he's done for you, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. You know, um, there's another, there's another um, truth, and that's James 4, 7. It says, so clear, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And, y'all, submitting to God is that point where we say, you know, I've, I admit that you are the one I've got to follow. It, it's saying, Lord, I submit, I commit um, to you. I'm going to, I'm going to just absolutely resist Satan, and guess what? He has no choice but to flee. Um, and the last point I want to make, I would like to say, you can be free from the power of sin. And, and, and now we're getting to the meat of it. Uh, maybe you're thinking something like, you know, it's, it's not allowing sin to reign in my body. Sounds all well and good, but, man, it sure is hard to put in practice. Well, didn't we just read? That's what Paul was saying way back then. Um, we've all faced it. If anybody's going to be honest, I, I don't care if you've been a Christian 30 years or 30 minutes. If you faced it, I mean, if, you, if you're a Christian, you face Satan. He, he, he doesn't want us moving on with the Lord. He doesn't want us to be victorious. Um, John 10.10, 10, that, that passage of Scripture comes back over and over again. Um, and as Jesus talking, he said that uh, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's his job. That's what he's, but he says, and I love the, the, the fact that all this is in one verse, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Um, but let's look at Romans again and Romans 7, verse 15 and 16, um, it says, where Paul says, I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong, and my bad conscience shows that I agree that the law is good. And, y'all, when we read these two verses, 
if you think about it, there's only one person that's, that, that you can blame. If you read just these verses, you're going to say, well, golly, it's all on me. It's all on me. It looks like he's saying, well, I don't understand myself at all. I want to do right. I can't do it. But if it's only us in the picture, it would stand to reason that's all that we could, we, we could blame. But let's, let's turn on to the next. Verse 17 says, but I can't help myself because it is sin inside me that makes me do these evil things. Now how many players are there? Looks like there's another player involved, right? I know that nothing, this is verse 18, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I've got the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. And at first it looks like he's saying I'm no good, but y'all, that's not what he's saying at all. Suppose you got a splinter in your finger, okay? That splinter will be the nothing good dwelling in your flesh. You got something that's a, it's a foreign object that's in your body. Um, this, the passages that we're looking at, I think Paul's, he's really going to great lengths to show us that there's another party involved. It's not just us. We start, that, that cycle I was talking about where you, where you do something wrong, it doesn't have to be a big sin, but you start feeling guilty, you start beating on yourself, um, you're really beating the wrong one. You need to start beating that splinter. Uh, <laughs> don't be walking around with messed up fingers. <laughs> but, you know, it, there's sin living in, in us, um, and Satan's working nonstop to, to keep us in that, that way. We were born under the penalty of sin in Adam. Remember that. Um, and Satan's trying his best to keep us under there. He doesn't tuck his tail and run. Just like John 10, 10 says, he's going to keep on doing what he can to steal, kill, and destroy. But let me ask you this. How he works on us is through our flesh. How does he get into us? How does it, where does it come from? It's not a splinter. That was just an analogy to get us to realize there's something. It's not us that's, that's the nothing good. He gets, into, he gets to us through our minds. And if you look at verse 23, it says, But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. If Satan can get us to think we're the only ones in the battle, y'all, if Satan gets us to think that it's useless, if Satan can get us to think that all this, you know, it's all up to me, guess what? We're going to be discouraged. I've been there. And, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks also can say that. We get back in that same old cycle. You sin, you beat yourself up, you feel guilty, you, you repent, you sin, you, and, and it just like that dog chasing that tail. Um, but speaking of dogs, suppose, I'm going to put this right here, and, and, I, and I basically, um, a guy shared this with me or, um, that, that just makes sense. He says, suppose there's a talking dog outside your door, and he's saying, come on, let me in. You know you want to. Everybody's doing it. You'll get away with it. And that's a talking dog, okay? Said so on the other side of the door, the dog was playing the role of the tempter. He said, come on, let me in. Let me, let me in. It's going to be fun. Everybody else is doing it. Who's going to know? So you let him in. Guess what the dog does? He clamps his teeth around your leg. So on the other side, is that sin? I mean, that, that, just, that was a neat analogy to me. I said, yeah, I can relate to simple stuff, you know. But that's the deal. But what does he do when he gets, and he gets his hand, I mean, teeth around your leg? He's just laughing then. He's, ha, ha, you open the door. It's your fault. He's blaming us for opening the door. Outside the door, he was the tempter. When he gets inside, guess what? He's the accuser. Does that sound like Satan in anybody else's life besides mine? I'm seeing one or two heads nod, ain't it? So next time something comes up, be thinking about that nasty dog outside there. <laughs> but, um, and you know what? Eventually, and I've seen it, and maybe you all have to, eventually folks will get so tired of chasing that tail, of doing the, the, the sin, the guilt, the, you know, all that around, they'll, they'll walk away from the Lord. I've got a close person. Matter of fact, the man that led me to Jesus Christ back in 1974 went through the exact same thing, and I'm praying for him at, that he'll come back to the Lord, but he is not serving the Lord now. He preached for 20-plus years, and he just didn't capture that. And, y'all, I'm just saying all that to say this right here. Don't matter how long we've been saved. doesn't matter how strong we are in the Lord. Satan, he, that's the one that he's wanting to get. Is the one he, he doesn't care about those that haven't given their lives to him yet. He's already got them. He's concerned about the ones that have accepted Christ. Um, so let's go ahead and finish on out. Something to realize, y'all, is just beating that dog isn't going to be good enough either. Uh, We've got to do like James 4, 7 says. We submit to God. We, we resist the devil, uh, knowing that he's going to flee, flee from us. Now let's go back and shut that door where that dog ain't going to get in again. We can't get suckered into opening it again. That's our choice. That's some of the things we got to, um, got to just step up and do. In verse 24, Paul says, Wretched man that I am. He's not saying wicked. He's not saying sinful. He's not saying 
defeated. He's saying miserable. The word wretched, um, when you check it out, is really the word miserable man that I am. And, y'all, there's nobody more miserable than a person that wants to do right and just can't find themselves doing it because they just don't understand who they are in God. They don't understand that they are a child of living God. They can curl up in his lap like big old Roy McClung. They can curl up in daddy's lap. They just don't get that. They, they think God's as big, you know, with a big switch. And he's going to just knock us out every time we do something wrong. They don't understand that, that we are a child of God. There's that love factor. Um, and anyhow, there's, um, if we look at, chapter, at verse 25, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Y'all, we've been feeling guilty for our inability to live the Christian life uh, without really understanding how to live it. And, and it's, uh, it's my hope, and that, that's the whole thing. I, I try to put this together so that we'll realize that we do have a way of living, living that, that Christ-like life. If you're related to this message at all, um, I want you to know you're not alone. I want you to know you're not alone. You're probably sitting in amongst the hundred folks that are doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be frank. We all, if we walk with the Lord, we're all facing things day by day. My great-grandmother used to say that, that an idle mind is the devil's playground. Has anybody heard that one? <clears throat> an idle mind is the devil's playground. Let me tell you something. Even a mind that's not idle, it's still open to Satan's influences if we don't, if we don't have it working in the, right, in the right ways. Can we all bow our heads right now? Y'all, right now I want to just think about some choices. We talked this morning about being victorious over sin and death. We talked about um, choices that, that we can make and choices that we've already made. Maybe you're already, already a Christian. You haven't given it all to him. You, you, he, he's, your, he's your Savior. He's, he's saved you by his grace, but maybe you haven't made him Lord of your life. And I just want to give you an opportunity right now that, that if you'd like to, to, to make it right with him right now, we're going to pause in just a minute for some prayer and and just give you the opportunity just to make it right. If you, I'm not asking you, I'm not going to ask, embarrass anybody, I'm not going to ask you to stand down. But if that's you right now and you feel this message might, might have some merit and it might have some merit in your life, just let it be known by the uplifted hand. If you would, just, just lift your hand up to the Lord. And, and I'm not even looking. I, I, it's not for me to know. I'm not counting. I just want you to just acknowledge that between you and the Lord, that, Lord, I'm ready to make you the Lord of my life. Uh, if there's issues you've been battling, temptations you've given into, there's some choices you made that are wrong, and there's some situations that's too, too, too personal to even share it. But guess what? God already knows. Just, just slip up your hand to the Lord if you just do it in your, in your heart. Uh, maybe you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus Christ to become the Lord of your life. And I'm going to ask you right now, suppose today be the last day you were ever to breathe in this earth. Do you know where you spend eternity? And, y'all, that's a serious question. Um, I'm not... I don't want to draw this out. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. But if today you'd like to know, there's a there's that small voice that's just nudging in your spirit, and, and and you'd like to know that you know that that you be you go to to meet the Lord in heaven. I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up just real quick. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to ask anybody to come down. I just want to. If there's someone here that just needs to make that decision this morning and ready to make that decision this morning, just slip up your hand. We're just going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer right now and. And Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for the beauty of nature. I thank you that even though it's hot, Lord, even though it's humid, Father God, we can worship you under these open skies. This is your tabernacle, Father. And we just, we're so glad that we can do that. We're glad and thankful, Father. We, we live in a country, Lord, that, that we have these freedoms that so many countries don't have. And God, I just ask you right now, Father, to, to bless and, and, and just protect each one that's here this morning, Father, as we go our separate ways i pray god that if there's one that's leaving now that doesn't know you as their savior god that today be that time lord that that you'll just 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 settle in their heart father the fact that they just need to make that decision god if there's someone here that that's been battling some of the things we've been talking about god and they just whatever that particular personal sin is to them god they just they just need to, to have that closer walk with you i pray father for just that that um that anointing in their lives i pray father you'll just Show them. Make the Bible come alive to them, Lord. Just make their devotions come alive to you, Father. We just thank you that we can crawl up in your lap and call you Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, thank you so much for coming. Um,